Joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show, International Tennis Hall of Famer, Billie Jean King. How are you, Billie Jean? Uh, I'm uh, wilted. We just came off the world team, the Milan World Team Tennis uh, draft. I'm exhausted. I bet. You know, it's and been I, an unbelievable week. Well, you know, you, being out in Indy Wells, uh, where you just heard Ray Moore, who actually is a very good friend, and uh, we've been in touch with him. Uh, and uh, I, you know, let's let it go. And he really worked hard for apartheid in South Africa. So he's done some great stuff and things in his life. And you know, he was very. Very apologetic and big, and I said, let's just go on. You know, we're friends, and let's just let's move on here. And uh, Chris Everett and I actually had a press conference at Indian Wells where we met with the media because I was getting slammed with requests, which is a nice problem. Believe me, I, my generation, <laughs> when we were starting professional tennis, you know, we were begging people to listen to us or, or write about us. So I always appreciate um, the media and, and their interest. So... We had a conference that was quite long, and it was more like the old-fashioned way, a discussion. Uh, Nicole Gibbs, who actually got drafted today, uh, she was our Rookie of the Year last year in uh, Team Tennis. Uh, she, I asked her a couple of questions. She was sitting in the audience because she's totally into this equal equality and the gender uh, equity and everything. And it was really a, a great press conference. And then uh, afterwards, uh, Novak Djokovic uh, asked to sit with Chris and me. Hmm. Uh, we had a great discussion. Uh, I just love this guy anyway. I've always loved him. He's so smart, uh, very generous. You know, he's given his country money when they need it. Uh, like he gave this prize money of 500000 when they were having weather challenges in the climate there. And uh, he really, he, he's a great guy, and he, he's, he's a real leader. And, uh, you know, he's been saying about the prize money and this and that. And we sat down, and he was great. We all both listened to each other, and... Uh, we're going to have a continued dialogue now. He said, Billy, can we keep talking? And Chris, and we said, absolutely, Let's always, it always works better in life to communicate. And um, I just told him I would like us to think way beyond this prize money issue. I said, we're one of the few professional sports. I say, I always wanted us to be together from the beginning, and the boys, the men rejected us. So we went to plan B to start our women's tour. That was plan B for Billy anyway. Right. So. So anyway, I said, I just wish we'd work more and more together because we're one of the few professional sports where we both have high profile. And it's not just what we can do on the court. It's the power we have to do off the court to make the world a better place. And he absolutely took that in. I could see by his eyes and his brain was going a mile a minute. And we're going to continue this dialogue because I think together we're much more powerful. The pie is bigger. More people have jobs more attention, more everything. We're one of the few sports, tennis, we're also an individual sport and a team sport that is very unusual. So we have unbelievable opportunities to help keep change the world and make it a better place. Yeah, I mean, and when you think about it, I mean, the uh, NBA and WNBA don't hold their games in the same day in the same place. The right. LPGA and the PGA Tour don't hold well, their tours at the same it. time. You know, the PGA and the LPGA, they're trying to figure out maybe a way to, to do more together. Hmm. It's just the way it's better world it it uh, it makes it more fun. More people can identify with the players because you know if you're a girl, you can identify with the girl or boy as a boy. And and it's very very uh, important that we do good work because we're one of the, you know we're really lucky. Athletes, professional athletes, are some of the luckiest people in the world. And I think we, a lot of times we don't realize. It. I think my generation does, but I think you know as you get <laughs> younger generations, it's different for them. And we're thrilled because that's what we fought for. But. We, I think we have a responsibility, and I think we can do some great things uh, no matter what. I mean, world team, you know, we had our draft today. It's yes. so ironic this subject's come up because today was our 41st draft, okay? That means we've been around 41 seasons. Of the world team tennis. And with world team tennis, yeah. and, you know, Milan's our sponsor. But more importantly, we have been about this issue forever. We have e equality on the court. We have men and women together, uh, equal contribution by both men and women. And it's the way I want the world to look. I want us working together on Earth, together to make it better. Sure, We're talking but the, about families the, trying to get food on the table or shelter over their heads or education for their children. But we can, we can talk about the possibilities. Uh, but our job is to help inspire, motivate, and make a difference at the local level all the way up to the international level. And so... That's what we're talking about, and, and Novak's all into it. Well, that's, um, that's great to hear, Billie Jean, but uh, it does seem that he and Raymond Moore have given voice to what 
people whisper about maybe on the men's side? Oh, no, that, we but, know. But, I, we, listen. But what, um, so what, why? Do, we, hear, we hear it every place because I think, especially the two guys who have daughters, which always makes a difference, is Murray and Warenka spoke up. And Murray talked about he would never talk to his daughter. He would never tell her she's worth less than the boy if they have a boy in the family. Mm -hmm. Now, Roger Federer has two boys and two girls, so I hope he... <laughs> He's got a team tennis team. I, I look at his family. I just laugh. I go, oh, let's just let's draft him now. But why, why do you now. think this is still an issue, though? I thought this because was Because it's hard for people that have power. Okay, I'm going to talk about there's dominant groups think subdominant groups are invisible. Subdominant groups know a lot about the, the dominant group because they have to navigate their rules. So it's very important that we... Um, we include, I'm big on inclusion. Mm -hmm. I started a uh, Billie Jean King leadership initiative, too, that we're all about inclusion in the workplace. And we have a long way to go, but it's possible. And the new generation of men, the younger ones, are much more open than my generation. So there's hope, there's change. Uh, you talked about you wanted to play me. Yes, as see, a four-year-old, Billy. You, you see, when the kids are young, they don't, they don't care. It's the, it's the way we're socialized when we, as we get older. You're supposed to act a certain way, be a certain way, but you know we're really we're really fortunate um, with World Team Tennis that we actually are taking care of this from day one, and uh, that's why a lot of people love us. They just love the fact we're out there killing ourselves for each other. Uh, and sometimes the men are in a leadership position, and sometimes the women are in a, in a supportive position, and vice versa. And that way, um, as you go through the day, I mean, I'm sure you you're and your wife when you go through a day, you're like a team. And my mom and dad were, they were amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's what we want, that's what we want. And we want to make a difference in team tennis. Our goal is to help uh, get more kids in the sport, the sport of a lifetime, uh, help them get their education because of their, their, their sport. If they happen to be crazy like a few of us, then they can go to the pros um, that want to, you know, put their life in, in, that, in that path, on, on that pathway. Uh, I knew at 11 I wanted to be number one in the world. That tennis was very amateur, and they were making $14 a day, and not probably not even that. Actually, when I first had that dream, but you know, our teams, uh, our teams are excited. We've got a ton of, we've got Isner, and we've got Fish, we've got you know, we've just got all kinds. Yeah, you got Roddick. I mean, you we have some, Roddick, you have some got, names. Uh, McHale, McHale went to New York. We have a new team, the New York Empire. Patrick McEnroe is the coach. Um, Nicole Gibbs has gone back to. Uh, her team, um, and she, uh, you know, Christy McHale, I think, just beat uh, Magaruga, who's number four in the world. Mm -hmm. So she's playing well. Hingis is back. You know, she's got 21 Grand Slam titles. The Bryans are back. Uh, Donald Young's playing. Uh, we've got, and we've got so many rising stars. But if people want to really know and look at the draft, how they went round by round, and who's in the, who's in our Milan World Team Tennis draft, they should go to WTT.com. Yes. And if they wanted to see everything, but it, it's the most nerve-wracking day of the year for me. I hate it. I love it, and I hate it. Well, and look, I I'm mean. I'm glad it's over. I can now breathe again and everybody can move on. And, of course, we have coaching, too. We really emphasize great coaching. We try to upgrade the coaches. Uh, we want coaches in tennis to be much more visible in the tournaments and in uh, team play. And we've got great coaches. I told you we've got Patrick McEnroe. We've got John Lloyd, who's been the British Davis Cup captain. You know, we've got Murphy Jensen, who won the French with his brother. We've got Rick Leach, who was number one in the world in doubles. So we've got some great coaches, um, and I, I'm really excited. And well, we've got our new team, the New York Empire. And, of course, I own the Philadelphia Freedoms. They, and, Philadelphia uh, you know, Freedom, a little Elton John right yeah, there, Elton Billy. wrote that. You know how he wrote that? How he used to come and watch me play for the Freedoms back in the first uh, mm -hmm. season. And during the season, he says, I want to write a song for you. And I'm thinking, I didn't hear you right, man. Did you? you know? And he goes, no, I want to write a song. He said, what are we going to call it? What are we going to call it? I said, I don't know. I'm, I'm like, I'm embarrassed already. And he goes, how about the fill up your freedom? Because he used to sit on the bench. We had him, he was in uniform, going crazy, yelling, come on. He goes crazy. And so anyway, he wrote this song uh, for me and the team. And it that? became number one, and it crossed over to R&B and became number one. And, of course, the Bicentennial was a year later. He, it, it, it was released in early 75, and then it be, uh, in 76 was our <laughs> Bicentennial. So it really, 
And now it's kind of the anthem in Philadelphia. It so is cool. that for sure. Oh yeah, it's great, man. Hey. It was number one. This guy, it still resonates when he when he starts playing that at a concert. Everybody starts rocking. I know. It's great. Billy Jean King, thank you for calling into the show. I really appreciate Rich, it. Thank you, and you know I've always enjoyed uh, listening to you, watching thank to you. you. I mean, you were always great on the. <laughs> I have uh, the NFL Network, and now you're doing this. You got the show and. Anyway, it's really great talking to you. And say hi to everybody, and I, I really appreciate you having me on. Please, and when you're in Los Angeles, come in studio. I want to talk that to you. Great. I want to talk to you about so much other stuff. You when got we're it. Just, instead of just a 10-minute phone call. No, Thank you, Billie great. Jean. Thank, Thank you, you so much, and great. I hope everyone's doing well. We are. Thank All you. Right. That's uh, Billie Jean King. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.